Hello everyone and welcome to my Lily guide for Tekken 8. I have been maining Lily since Tekken Tech 2, so that's more than 10 years of maining Lily now, and I've been playing her at a high level since Tekken 7. I want to address two things before we start. Firstly, I will be using the universal Tekken notations to refer to moves, and if you aren't familiar with notations, please read my link in the description below. Secondly, uh, this will be an in-depth guide, so if you are looking for a quick video on her basic important stuff only, then this video is not for you. So uh, Lily shines with uh, strong fundamentals. She utilizes her stances and pressure tools such as jab strings, down forward one, down three, down forward three, two glide three plus four, back one, uh, along with movement to create punishment and counter hit opportunities. She is renowned for her exceptional sidestep and she has solid block and with punishment with moves such as forward 2-3, three, 3-1, three, down forward 2 which has really good range, etc. Uh, moreover, she has really good combo damage and a strong wall carry. She has evasive moves and uh, a few good panic moves to help her deal with aggressive opponents like Matterhorn, up 3 plus 4, uh, her snake edge is really evasive. And she has a strong wall game. It's like half her move list uh, wall splats. Her previous weakness in slow counter hit tools has been addressed with additions such as counter hit for 4 in Tekken 7 and uh, 113 uh, in Tekken 8, which is a counter hit string, where the last hit is a counter hit launcher. Uh, forward 4 especially complements her numerous plus on hit tools for uh, counter hit launches. Additionally, improvements to her down forward 1 uh, in Tekken 7 and down forward 4 in Tekken 8, alongside new Tekken 8 additions such as 3 plus 4, uh, back turn down 2, and back turn 3 4, uh, help her uh, with her tracking. And lastly, her Okizame is much, much stronger now, thanks to Duglight 3. It is a safe on block and it hits grounded. Uh, and it hits so many wake up options, but we'll get to that later. Let's move on to her block punishers. So for 10 frames, we have 2 4, but the range on this is really bad. Uh, so if we need more range, we have 1 1. Uh, which is a uh, plus 4 on hit into back turn, which is really good. Or we have 1 2 for less damage but plus 8 on hit. For 12 frames, we have forward 2 3. It reaches really, really far. It wall splats from really far as well. Uh, and uh, if you're a little further back from the wall, it will not wall splat anymore for a juggle. And if you go a little further even, at a specific range, uh, the opponent uh, is wall spot with a specific animation where their feet are up in the air. Uh, and you can get a combo there as well, even though the game doesn't uh, count it as a combo. There it is. And you can get a quarter sook forward 3, it's guaranteed. So another option for 12 frames is 1 plus 2. Uh, some moves recover and crouch, so you can use 1 plus 2 for, the, uh, for those moves because forward 2 is a high and 1 plus 2 is a mid. For example, Zafina's forward for 3 plus 4 uh, recovers in a really low stance, or the bear's power crush that can either go into a low stance or not, and uh, 1 plus 2 will punish the both options. Uh, she also has 4 1, but uh, there's no reason for using this as a punisher over forward 2 3 and 1 plus 2. And for 13, you ideally want to go for forward 2 3 because of the knockdown. But if you want more damage, you can do down forward 4 4. Deals 5 more damage than forward 2 3. 
She doesn't have she doesn't have anything for 14. Uh, for 15 we have her up for a 3 hop kick with pretty decent rate range and a pretty low hitbox. And uh, 3 1 for uh, moves for the pushback and it's also a heating danger. Uh, for 16 we have down forward 2 with better range than up forward 3. But the hitbox is so high on this that it will often whiff versus low stances like uh, Zafina's stances and Xiaoyu's stances or moves that recover in really low stances. For 17 uh, we have forward 4. Uh, with even better range than 3-1 for those uh, moves um, which 3-1 uh, won't reach. And uh, down 3 plus 4, which is her Matterhorn, for uh, some big damage. Uh, for while standing punishers, we have while standing 4 at 11 frames. Sometimes in the open you can get a mini combo with down 4. It's inconsistent. Uh, and at the wall, uh, she can get a down forward 4. four. And this also breaks uh, floors for really good damage. Uh, for 13, we have wall standing 1 2. With a hefty plus 8 frame advantage, you can finish the string with wall standing 1 2 4. In which case you also get a guaranteed uh, do glide 3 follow up. And uh, the last hit is also a counter hit launcher. There we go. Uh, for 14. Oh, I forgot. Uh, from Wasling 1 2, she can also go to do glide with even. With an even better frame advantage, but nothing is guaranteed here. Uh, then for 14, we have full crouch down forward 1. In most cases, you want to use wall standing 1 2 instead for the damage, but uh, this wall spots and hits lower if you need to punish some uh, obscure moves that go into low stances. Uh, for 15, she has. While standing 3. This was uh, previously a 16 frame move. They buffed it to 15 frames. Or up for 3. At 16 frames, we have while standing 2. As for whiff punishers, she has a wide array of whiff punishers. You can use either jab strings, uh, forward 2 3, 3 1. Uh, hop kick, down for two, or uh, back one four at the wall, course of forward one two at the wall, or down three plus four for uh, big whiffs. Let's talk about some key moves now. So we have a standard one jab, it's plus one on block and plus eight on hit. It's ideal for starting your own pressure. Uh, following up with another jab on block creates a frame trap. And on hit, forward 4 is also a frame trap which cannot be stepped. And it's a safe uh, mid counter hit launcher. Lily has quite a few moves that are plus 8 on hit. So you can replicate this frame trap multiple times during matches. It's not to say you should always be going for frame traps, but understanding frame traps is a huge advantage for new and uh, intermediate players. 1 2 is a double high jailing string, plus 8 on hit, minus 3 on block, and she has two extensions from 1 2, which you can use occasionally. 1 2 3 is a low option, and she has the same low uh, from a 2 jab as well, with 2 3. It's not advantageous on hit, but it's unstoppable. And on counter hit, uh, the opponent the opponent is forced into crouch at plus six for Lily, setting up forward one plus two as the same frame trap. Forward one plus two uh, 
grants a free 1 plus 2 on counter hit, which really hurts at the wall. You can also use up forward 3 uh, as a frame trap at plus 6 for a launch, but it is unsafe on block. And then she has 1, 2, 4, which is a mid extension. It deals uh, chip damage on block, uh, and it's also safe, but it can be easily stepped or interrupted uh, if the opponent uh, blocks the jabs. After a 1-2 on hit though, the opponent cannot reverse, rage art, or power crush through it, they just have to block the mid extension. 1-1 uh, one, one is another high high, ja high, high jab string. Uh, it gels on block unless you delay the second hit. Let's see if I can set the dummy to duck to show you. Okay, there we go. And block all. So this is on non-delay. And this is on delay. Uh, the extension 1, 2, 3 is a counter hit launcher, but it is minus 15 on block, so really, really unsafe and launch punishable. And uh, the entire string is guaranteed on counter hit. Uh, it's useful for defensive play. Uh, you cannot counter hit confirm, but you can twitch confirm if opponents uh, press buttons before the first jab. At the wall, it uh, guarantees a quarter circle four three follow up on normal hit, and nothing is guaranteed in the open. Uh, and as I already said, the last hit is also a counter hit launcher on its own and 1-1 one, one transitions to back turn stance at uh, minus 4 on block and plus 4 on hit there it is minus 4 uh, back turn wall plus 2 is a mid launcher that frame traps here on hit and 1-1 one, one on block is tricky too uh, holding back gets Lily hit by jabs because she cannot turn around fast enough to uh, block them. But again, she can duck under them or hold down back to avoid the jabs uh, or do one of her high evading vector moves. Same scenario as after down for 3 plus 4 on block. Down forward 1 is her main mid poke. Uh, 13 frames fast. It's uh, minus 1 on block. Uh, so this allows her to sidestep almost anything afterwards on block. It also tracks really well to her left and it's plus 8 on hit. Uh, the hitbox on her down forward run has been significantly improved during Tekken 7. It's a re really good down forward one now. Uh, back one. On its own it's not impressive but holding forward uh, transitions into do glide stance, uh, making back one uh, plus eight on hit instead of plus two, and uh, neutral on block. The extension back one four is natural on non delay. Uh, this string is effective at the wall for substantial damage, and it wall splats from really far as well. As you can see, they travel so far. Uh, normally, you want to commit to a do glide move after back one or cancel the do glide by pressing up. This makes her sidestep. Uh, and then you can continue uh, your neutral offense. Then she has quarter circle 4 at 3 plus 4. Uh, it's her best to move from do glide. It's not homing anymore, like in Tekken 7. But it still has some tracking and it's plus 6 on block. Uh, down forward 4 and uh, forward 1 plus 2 are good safe uh, frame traps here on block. Or uh, up forward 3 for a bigger reward. But it's also unsafe on block. 
also up for three uh, catches opponents uh, stepping to your left. And then we have down for three. This is her best uh, power mid for pressure. It's uh, slow and linear, however, it forces crouch on block and hit. It is a counter hit launcher. And it's plus eight on hit again and plus three on block. Uh, jab strings and one plus two frame trap on block here. Uh, down three is her main low poke. It's minus 12 on block and plus one on hit with excellent range. As you can see it hits from really far. Uh, and Lily steps closer to her opponent so it's a good approach too. It also tracks to her left really, really well, and uh, somewhat to her right as well. On counter hit, it's plus five, and the opponent is uh, crouching, uh, and this sets up a uh, forward one plus two frame trap again. Then we have down one two. It's a low high natural on hit string that tends to avoid highs. Uh, it also transitions into back turn with down one to back at plus three frames. Uh, and back turn one plus two here uh, trades with jabs and uh, duck jabs, but it beats any other uh, slower options. You can also use uh, down one on its own, which is uh, neutral on hit and uh, minus 11 on block and uh, holding down transitions into full crouch and from here I like to do full crouch down forward one because it has a, a little bit of tracking and uh, it's safe on block and it uh, often evades highs with uh, poor hitboxes. Then we have uh, forward forward four which is your main power low. This is also minus 12 on block it's uh, semi seeable but most opponents will not be able to block it on reaction. Uh, it's linear and uh, plus four on hit. Down forward one, down forward four, and uh, one plus two are good frame trap options here. And transitioning into back turn stance with forward forward four back is almost always preferred uh, because forward forward four back tracks both sides really well and it's plus eight on hit N but nothing is guaranteed here on normal hit on counter hit she gets uh, a guaranteed back turn one two or uh, back turn one four which is a uh, hitting danger you can uh, visually confirm the counter hit uh, because uh, the opponent is in this stagger animation uh, forward forward four back was previously launch punishable on block but uh, Lily can now turn around to block 13 frame or slower punishers or a power crush through 12 frame punishers with back turn 2. So going to back turn is actually safer on block than not going to back turn. I'm gonna try recording this for you. I recorded an example with Dragonov here to show you that uh, Lily can power crush through 12 frame attacks here. There we go. But uh, yeah, she cannot uh, power crush through while standing fours. Moving on, we have forward four, which is her main counter hit launcher. It's faster than down four three at 17 frames and it's safe on block. Uh, previously, it knocked down and wall spotted on normal hit. It no longer does, so consider other options in your walls. It has some tracking at deep range as well. Uh, a combo would go something like this. Okay, sorry. Yep. So that was uh, up forward four back into back turn three four back one forward three and then we have forward three which is her uh, main homing mode albeit it's slow 
with limited range. It's valuable for wall pressure and uh, it's only minus three on block, allowing Lily to move around freely on block. And on counter hit, she gets a guaranteed for a super four three for good damage. Let's move on to her heat mechanics now. So for heat engagers, we have 3-1, which is in my opinion her best heat engager with several uses. Firstly, it's a long ranged whiff and block punisher. And it's also her quickest heat move at 15 frames. And in heat, it's uh, a launcher. It also tracks really well to Lily's left and it hits low stances like uh, AOP. Then we have 3 plus 4. Uh, it's a homing move. It's double high, but it gels on block. It has really good range and it's only minus 2 on block, allowing you to freely move around on block. However, it's quite slow and if the first hit whiffs like this, uh, then the opponent can uh, duck under the second hit and launch you. Uh, it launches in heat if uh, you land it, if you land it uh, successfully. Then we have Do Glide One Two. It's a natural mid mid homing string. String. Uh, it's non hit confirmable, so you have to commit to the second hit here. Uh, it's guaranteed after moves like forward, forward, three on normal hit into do glide. Our uh, counter hit back one into do glide, and uh, it launches in heat again. So this is some big damage. <laughs> um. I like to use this move sometimes after do glide transitions when I expect my opponents to step or try to duck under do glide 3 plus 4. And then we have Feisty Rabbit 2. And you can enter Feisty Rabbit with back 4 or back 3. It's a safe mid heat engager. Uh, it's used as a mix up with uh, a low feisty rabbit three, and it launches in heat. Lastly, we have back turn one four. It's a double high, and this does not jail, so they can duck under the second hit on block. Uh, in heat, Porsuka four three is a guaranteed follow up. So this one is not a launcher, it's probably uh, her least useful heat engager. Mm, you can mix it up with back turn 1-2, which is a mid extension, uh, unsafe on block, to discourage opponents from ducking the second hit of back turn 1-4. She has two heat smashes. Her neutral heat smash is really underwhelming. It's uh, very slow, and the first hits are highs, so opponents who anticipate this attack will just duck under and launch you. Uh, it is a homing move, but it's also too slow to be efficiently used for tracking. It is, however, plus 9 on block, and Lily ends in back turn for some back turn pressure, and it breaks floors on hit for damaging combos. It even counts as a hard floor break and uh, for breaking hard floors you normally need two floor break moves the first one will crack the floor and the second hit will break it the heat smash counts as both her back turn heat smash is much more useful it is an unseeable low that uh, juggles with the correct distance from the wall let me see if I could show it Yeah, something like this. 
and block, uh, Lily can turn around to block 15 frame punishers. I recorded the dummy here. Oh, actually, it has some pushback, so many punishers might work as well. But as you can see, she blocked uh, my th uh, 15 frame standing three. Uh, she can also uh, power crush uh, with back turn uh, two through 14 frame punishers. And uh, she can also duck under high punishers and launch the opponent. Heat empowers her Feisty Rabbit stance. Uh, feisty Rabbit is input with either back 3 or back 4, depending on the side you want to jump to. And she can also do it from back turn and from do glide. And from uh, Feisty Rabbit, you can hold forward to enter do glide for mind games. If you hold back 3 or back 4, she jumps twice uh, to become more unpredictable. Lily can be hit out of Feisty Rabbit, so this stance is best used, uh, I mean best used with some prior conditioning of the opponent. Uh, I already mentioned Feisty Rabbit 2, but she also has Feisty Rabbit 4, which is a safe mid, it deals chip damage, and Feisty Rabbit 3, which is a low, it's plus 3. You can do blossoming 4 here as a frame trap, and uh, it's a counter hit launcher, and it's also homing. Should be a standard combo. So now let's uh, talk about uh, heat. Uh, she gets the same move as Feist Rabbit 4 from Core Circle Forward 1 4. Uh, forward 4, 3 plus 4, and 1, 4. Uh, these are also empowered during heat. Uh, this move becomes plus on block in heat with an even bigger frame advantage at the wall. Yeah, it goes from plus 4 in the neutral to plus 9 at the wall. In heat, uh, Feisty Rabbit 3 knocks down on the one hit uh, for a guaranteed uh, do glide 3 follow up, you have to either cancel the crouch with up here and then do forward circle forward 3 or with uh, forward forward and uh, if this is too difficult for you, you can also get uh, side step 4, uh, full crouch down forward 4 or uh, lost ending 3 Let's move on to her back turn stance now. So you cannot really poke from back turn because her back turn mids are all unsafe on block and uh, punishers really hurt in this game. Your opponent blocks this mid mid string twice and you already lost 50 or 60 HP from just getting punished twice. Uh, so you have to take a risk and uh, prepare to be punished if you get blocked or hop kicked over your lows. Uh, you can play in mind games with her moves that transition into back turn. Uh, like, make them guess if you are gonna go to back turn or not uh, from moves such as back one, uh, up forward for back, for circle forward one, etc. And uh, take advantage of her evasion and tracking from uh, back turn stance. Her two new back turn moves, back turn 3, 4, and back turn down 2 are so good. Uh, both have built in evasion. Back turn 3, 4 is homing, and back turn down 2 is, is almost homing. It's near impossible to step it. Um, so, back turn 3, 4. And uh, back turn 1 plus 2 are going to be your main mids from back turn. Uh, back turn 1 plus 2 is a 13 frame launcher. It's linear. Uh, minus 11 on block and forces crouch. 
so you will eat a while standing for Punisher. Uh, and at max range, she cannot pick up for a combo, or if she's off axis. Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes uh, she just cannot pick up for a combo. Uh, in that case, uh, you can get just a, a guaranteed ground hit, such as down back four or course four, four three. Um, and then back turn 3-4, it's a 14 frame homing mid mid string, natural on hit, and it gives a guaranteed core circle forward 3 on hit for big damage. Or you can also do forward 4, 3 plus 4 for a little more damage, but uh, a worse LK position. Uh, back turn 3-4 into back on 4 is a cheeky setup that will relaunch opponents who don't tech roll. Both hits are unsafe on block, but most opponents will be afraid of punishing the first hit uh, because of the second hit, so you can kind of use back turn 3 on its own as a safe mid poke. This is as close as you will get to a safe mid poke from back turn stance. Uh, it's minus 10, and the second hit is minus 12. And then back turn down 2, uh, it's her main low from back turn, only minus 12 on block with built-in evasion, and as I already said, it's not a homing move, but ne it's near impossible to step it. It's plus 5 on hit, and goes into full crouch. Uh, a good safe frame trap afterwards is full crouch down forward 1 which gives a guaranteed uh, do glide 3 on the counter hit. Or even a do glide 1 plus 2. <laughs> yeah, 52 damage. Uh, back turn down 2 on counter hit uh, gets a guaranteed quarter circle for 3. Again, here you have to cancel the full crouch with tapping up to sidestep and then doing quarter circle forward 3 or uh, with forward forward. forward, forward. Um, you can also do down forward 3 if the crouch cancel is too difficult for you. And then we have back turn down 4. It's another low poke. It has some evasion as well, just like back turn down two, and it's quicker. But it doesn't track as well, and it's only plus one on hit, and it doesn't do anything on counter hit. Uh, so there's really not much reason for using this over back turn down two. Um, it's good uh, in a specific Oki situation after this string at the wall into back turn down 4, but I'll talk about it a little later. The next move is back turn 3 plus 4, which deals chip damage on block, um, but it's too slow and linear, uh, so many good opponents uh, jab Lily out of it on reaction. On block it's anywhere from plus 2 to plus 5, depending on range. Um, so back turn 1 4, back turn 1 2, uh, back turn 1 plus 2, and back turn 3 4 will act as frame traps. As already mentioned, back turn 1 4 is a double high heat engager that doesn't gel, and back turn 1 2 is a mid to discourage opponents from ducking back turn 1 4 on block. Back turn 1 on its own is 8 frames fast. So it's faster than a standard jab from neutral. Uh, both back turn 1-2 uh, and back turn 1-4 are guaranteed from uh, counter hit back to one back and uh, counter hit forward forward four back. An interesting thing to note here is that the second hit of Back turn 1 2 hits grounded 
from any angle. Uh, not that it's any useful as an Oki tool, it's just interesting because uh, from the animation on its own, I think you wouldn't be able to tell that this hits grounded. Then we have Backturn 2, her power crush from Backturn. Uh, it tracks to Lily's right. It's a really good power crush in my opinion for what it does. Um, so it also wall splats uh, and it crushes one frame faster than turning around to block. As I showed before, um, for example after forward, forward, four back on block, uh, she cannot turn around in time to block 12 frame punishers, but she can power crush through them with back turn two. Uh, then we have back turn down three, which is another low poke, but it's not very good. On block, it's like minus 17 launch punishable, and it's negative on hit as well. The extension four is natural only on counter hit. Uh, you can use the extension if you are afraid of getting punished for your low. Yeah, as you can see here, it's not natural, and the second hit is minus 13. So, if you finish the string, it's you're still getting punished, but at least you don't risk getting launched for the low on its own. And uh, the slow also has a bit of tracking to her right, I think. And at the wall, both hits are guaranteed on grounded opponents who uh, do not side quick roll. Yeah, but they can uh, side quick roll in between the uh, first and second hit. Okay, let's go back to the center of the stage. So then we have back turn down triple swore. And this used to be homing, not anymore, but the tracking is still pretty good. Um, it's a few frames faster than in the previous games as well, but it still seems reactable by some people because of its distinct animation. So don't use this move too often because it also staggers on block. Yeah, minus 26. Um, it does go under highs as well and maybe even some mids occasionally. And uh, you can get a mini combo with back turn down three four and then you can tail spin off of it uh, at the wall uh, or you can also do down three plus four forward into a guaranteed do glide three for a little more damage than the mini combo uh, then we have back turn of four three plus four this is not uh, a very useful move. This is only used as a combo ender. Uh, I'm sorry, denotation is 4, 3, 3 plus 4 for the full string. It's too unsafe. Um, the opponent can interrupt Lily after uh, after this kick and she will get punished regardless of whether you finish the string or not. Now let's look at her back turn transitions. So we have manual back 3 plus 4, 1 1, down to 1 back, down for 3 plus 4, and down for 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, back to 1 back, up forward 4 back, uh, forward forward 4 back, course circle forward 1 2 back, 3. Sidestep so 4 and the heat smashes. There's also down forward 2 back and wall standing 2 back, but these are only used in combos for wall carry because uh, these are unsafe on block regardless of whether you go into back turn or not. Her best back turn transitions are 1-1. One, one. Side step four, back to one back, and forward, forward, four back. 
because of the great frames on hit and block. And down one two is also great because it's plus three on hit. But if the opponent blocks the first hit, uh, you are dead because it doesn't gel. Uh, three on its own is okay as well. Um, the frames on block and hit are not good. But because of the pushback, you can kind of use this as a keep out tool um, and avoid punishment in most cases. Now let's look at some situations created with these back turn transitions. So I already talked about 1-1 one, one in the key modes section. Um, back to one back is... Back to one back creates the same situation on block because it's also minus four on block just like one one but on hit it's uh, plus seven so even back turn one plus two will be hard to step or unsteppable because the bigger the frame advantage the harder it is to step linear moves uh, side step four has the best frames on block it's minus two uh, if you don't count the heat smash because that's uh, plus nine on block. It's a completely safe back turn transition because of the fact that it's only minus two on block. So you can hold back to block everything. Not even jabs will be guaranteed here. And since uh, back turn one four and uh, back turn one two are eight frames fast, um, after sidestep uh, four on block, they will trade hits with the opponent's jabs, but interrupt slower moves. So it's another option to discourage opponents from interrupting your back to stance and uh, getting a wall splat at the wall. Uh, on hit, it's um, plus four, just like one one, but because of the bigger pushback, the opponent can uh, backdash some of Lily's options here. You can kind of use this as a keep out tool, uh, precisely because of the pushback and good frames on block. Forward, 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 back, I already talked about in the chemo section and about down forward, 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4 as well. Up forward, forward, back is not very good because it's already hella slow and it's minus 7 on block, so 12 frame moves are guaranteed on her back. You can, however, finish the string with up forward 4-3, which deals a ton of damage. This is almost 50. And if they don't back roll, she gets a guaranteed 4 circle forward 3 on normal hit. Uh, sometimes I just throw out this string randomly because of the damage and if it hits, that's great. Otherwise, it's safe on block. Um, the second hit is steppable, but nobody really steps it. Uh, on counter hit, the second hit gives this guaranteed, uh, I mean, uh, it gives this uh, flop animation, which is a little different because the feet go higher up than on normal hit. Or not, apparently. Yeah, they do go a little higher, and in this case, they cannot back roll here. Yeah, and then Quora Circle 4 3 is absolutely guaranteed for a big chunk of damage. Then she has Quora Circle Forward 1 2 back. This is her worst back turn transition, frame wise. As you can see, even on hit, it's minus 9. You can eat a launcher here, even on hit. So expect to be punished severely. It does have two extensions, however Quora Circle Forward 1 2 which is a counter hit launcher. Uh, but it's minus 14 on block. Uh, so many characters can launch you for this, for example, Xiaoyu or Brian or Mishimas. And this extension is also really delayable for more mind games and more opportunities for a, a counter hit launch 
but it's no longer natural on hit if you delay it. Uh, it's decent as a whiff punisher too as well because of the distance that it covers and it's also really really evasive. I remember in tech 2 going under Paul's dead fist with this. And uh, the other extension is for Super Forward 1-4. This is safe on block and it deals chip damage on block again. This is not natural on normal hit. Uh, but it is natural on counter hit for a nice chunk of damage as well. It's a good string to throw out just once in a while because it's safe. It cannot be interrupted after the f first hit, not even uh, on block. And the uh, characters with normal sidesteps cannot step the second hit. They just have to block it. As far as I know, Lily can step it, but she's a, a rare exception. And the last stance is Dewglide. Uh, it, it's used generally for pressure to complement her tools from neutral and uh, for combos as well. The input is down, down forward forward for uh, your traditional Dewglide. But she can also transition to full crouch, which is down, down forward and hold down forward. She can access while standing and full crouch moves this way, like uh, full crouch down forward one and while standing moves like while standing two uh, if you let go of down forward. Uh, from Dewglide she can enter bunny hop with back three and back four as well and she has five moves that transition into Dewglide. Forward forward three, back one forward back to one forward three two forward and up three three forward the most useful transition is uh, back one because it's one of her most important mid pokes up three three is only used in combos because it's terrible on block uh, and the opponent can float you for a combo here uh, when transitioning to do glide from moves. Uh, she cannot access full crouch nor wall standing moves, except for wall standing four because there is no do glide move with that input yet. Another important thing about do glide is that it improves uh, the frames on block and hit of all moves that can transition into it. For example, forward forward three on its own is minus twelve. But with Dewglide, it becomes safe at minus 3. And here, what I'm doing is that I'm cancelling the Dewglide with up and then quickly holding back to block. It's just in a rapid succession. Um, as you can see, back 1 becomes plus 8 on hit instead of plus 2. And on block zero instead of minus six. Dewglide and Dewglide moves tend to slip under uh, some highs and mids as well. And while standing, uh, I mean, uh, the down down forward method, which transitions into full crouch, is uh, even more evasive than the regular Dewglide. Just don't try to slip under electrics. Because uh, even though they are highs, their hitboxes are too good for a Lily to slip under. As for uh, specific Dewglide moves, we already talked about a key move, quarter circle forward 3 plus 4. And we already talked about quarter circle forward 1, 2, 1, 4, and 2, 1 as well. Then she has Dewglide 3. It's okay in neutral because it's a uh, chunky safe on block mid but it's also minus nine on block so it kills your momentum uh, the more minus on block you are the harder it is to step even linear attacks um, the move shine shines in combos because it's a strong one hit tornado move 
and it's an Okizame tool as well because it hits grounded. Uh, the last do glide move I want to talk about is quarter circle forward 1 plus 2. It's a power crush and it wall splats. Uh, I think this is her best power crush at the wall because it is only minus 11 on block compared to her other power crushes which are all minus 13. Uh, in the open it lacks range. That's why I prefer to use it at the wall and it still wall splats and it also gives this butt flop animation in the open. Nothing is guaranteed here but it's uh, a really good position for uh, more pressure from you. And uh, I also like to use this uh, from Duglight transitions on block uh, to make people respect my Duglight pressure. And uh, another thing to note here is that because it's minus 11 on block instead of minus 12 or 13, uh, throws are not guaranteed punishers on uh, on this power crush. Um, in Tekken 8, um, throws are guaranteed on uh, uh, power crushes as punishers. But most of them are 12 frames fast and slower, not 11. Uh, let me see if I can show it with the dummy. Opponents throw escapes are on. And now I'm going to record a down 1 plus 2. As you can see, the dummy could not break it. But if uh, I record the dummy doing four circle forward 1 plus 2, the dummy will be able to uh, break the throw. Yeah. Let's move on to some other useful moves that she has. Down 1 plus 2 is a power crush from neutral. It wall splats and it hits really, really low. It hits even low stances like AOP. And uh, nothing is guaranteed on hit in the open, but if you are a bit further away from the wall, uh, she gets a guaranteed quarter circle 4 3. It's not guaranteed in the open though. Then she has down 4 3 plus 4, a long ranged uh, launcher. It can catch uh, opponents sidestepping sometimes. It's really iffy. And it's an airborne move, so it jumps over lows. Uh, but it also means that she can be jabbed out of it in the air for, a, for an aerial combo. And on block, it sets up mind games. Uh, because she cannot turn around fast enough to block uh, 10 frame moves. So uh, many opponents will try to use jabs to punish her, but Lily can duck under the jabs. As you can see here, the, I recorded the dummy uh, punishing me. Uh, you can also hold uh, down in back turn or uh, hold down back to create some distance. Uh, I guess generally the safest option is uh, holding down back unless uh, the opponent has a read on you because uh, then she's really vulnerable to like uh, mids and uh, mid launchers in general, which is really dangerous. She also has uh, extensions. Well, she has one extension down for 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, which will jump over the duck jab, as you can see. But uh, this can be floated for a combo with jabs or down forward ones. Oh well, it trades hits with down four ones actually. So I guess jabs or any other moves that are up to 12 frames fast should be able to float her for a combo here. And uh, it's also vulnerable to sidestep. 
Uh, she also has a move from back turn. Back turn 3 plus 4. This will also uh, jump over Duck Chubs. And it's also vulnerable to stepping and uh, being floated for combos. Uh, and lastly, she has lots of uh, options from back turn, which uh, avoid highs. Like uh, back turn 3, 4 here. Or uh, back turn down 3 plus 4. And uh, back turn down to Then she has down forward 4-4 four, four, uh, outside of punishment uh, as a poke uh, string. Uh, down forward 4 used to be 15 frames fast. Um, it was buffed to 13. So it's the same speed as her main mid poke down forward 1. Her down forward one historically was very linear, so I'm still getting used to Lily having uh, two 13 frame tracking mids. Um, down forward four tracks to the opposite side as down forward one, so to Lily's right. But it's not very good tracking, it can still be sidewalked in most cases, whereas Lily's down forward one is much harder to sidewalk to her left. Um, down forward four is also very minus on block compared to down forward one. And on hit as well, it's a minus 2 on hit. But it has the low extension, which is minus 13 on block. And it's natural on hit and on non-delay. You can delay it, but uh, then it's not natural on normal hit anymore. Uh, most of the time, you just want to use the first hit and the second one uh, occasionally to catch them off guard. Uh, the opponent is in this uh, animation. Um, when you counter hit with the first hit uh, and the screen also shakes a little bit that's how you know that it's a counter hit and in that case uh, the extension is guaranteed even on full delay this is how we can counter hit confirm the the stream and the second hit i believe is plus six on counter hit uh, plus eight even so the same situation as 1 or 1 2 on hit. Um, because of the bad frames of down forward 4, uh, I would not use this over down forward 1 unless my opponent often steps to Lily's right, which I think is her weaker side. Uh, then she has forward 3 plus 4, which is minus 4 on block. Uh, so this was nerfed. I think it was minus 2 in Tekken 7. Uh, but minus 4 is still really good. Nothing is guaranteed on hit. Uh, but you get a mix-up. Uh, which is really good for Lily. Let me see if I can show this. So... Get a mix-up between... For Rokupo 3. This will hit every wake up option except for a toe kick and stand up by tapping up. But she can beat uh, a stand up with uh, forward 4. And uh, where's the toe kicks? Uh, you can do stuff like cartwheel or up 3 plus 4 or just uh, block it and low parry it and punish it. Uh, it's also an airborne move so it tends to jump over lows but that also means it can be floated for a combo midair. The extension forward 3 plus 4 3 is safe on block. Uh, it's safe on block but it's uh, interruptible in between. Uh, however, it's a launcher if you manage to hit it. Uh, the last hit of this string is 4, 3 plus 4, uh, 3, 4. Um, this is really minus on block with some pushback. 
so most uh, punishers will whip here. Um, it's also guaranteed if you hit uh, the entire string, like so, for 30 damage. And uh, you can also delay the last hit a little bit for more damage. So it doesn't count as a combo, but it's still guaranteed and it gives 36 damage in total. Uh, delay, the delay doesn't work at the wall though. The opponent can uh, tech roll in between uh, with the wall against their back. So uh, don't delay the string if you are using it as a wall under. Uh, then she has down T2. You can kind of use this as a poke. Um, it's uh, mid high, but it jails on block. If you delay the second hit, then it's duckable. And the second hit is minus 10 on block, but the extension down to 2-3 and uh, down to 2-4 uh, will discourage opponents from punishing you. The big problem with down to 2-4 is that it's minus 17 on block and the pushback isn't much. So you will get punished severely for, for this and it doesn't do anything special on counter hit. Uh, the nice thing about down to 2 is that it tracks to Lily's right, which generally is her weaker side, I think. Uh, it can use down to on its own, I guess, as well, and this one is safe on block, but and then again you might as well just use down forward 4. Uh, then she has down 3 plus 4, which is her infamous Matterhorn. It's a panic move or a punisher as well. Uh, use this only as your last resort uh, option when you're under pressure because like, as you can see it's really really unsafe on block. It tends to go under highs and many mids uh, but again it doesn't go under Mishima electrics due to their chunky hitbox even though they are highs. And then we have down back 3. It was a homing move in Tekken 7. It no, long, no longer is. But it still tracks to her right. Uh, the range on it on this is atrocious. Many times this will just randomly whiff in the opponent's face. I'm guessing it's also because of the it's really high hitbox. Lily is tall and she goes really high with this kick. Uh... The good thing is that it's a counter hit launcher and this one goes under highs very reliably, even under electrics, so it's a pretty decent move to use against characters with strong highs like, like uh, Steve or Mishima's or uh, if you're trying to go under jabs or something like that. Then we have down back 4. Uh, which is her snake edge. It's homing, but that doesn't really matter because it's so slow. This will be blocked on reaction uh, by uh, better opponents. Um, I guess you can use this as a last resort uh, panic move, similarly to Matterhorn, because this one also goes under many mids. And she has down back 3 plus 4. It, this is another seeable slow low, although it's a little faster than down back 4. It is a counter hit launcher, and uh, it goes under highs as well, like down back 3. And uh, at the wall, while standing 3 is guaranteed. Uh, in the open, nothing is guaranteed, uh, but full crowd jump forward 1 tends to. Uh, hit most wake up options. Uh, it doesn't hit, hit if they stay uh, grounded. Mm. And this is guaranteed on bears, even if they stay grounded because of their large hitbox. And then back 1 plus 2 uh, is supposed to be a backswing blow, 
but it's really bad. It doesn't evade much. Uh, this move is basically useless. It has some niche uses for avoiding strings. Um, this used to be much uh, more useful in Tac 2. Currently it's minus 12 on block, so it's, it, it, it isn't even safe. And uh, in Tac 2 uh, it was slower, uh, it evaded more, it was launch punishable on block, but it was also a counter hit launcher. It doesn't do anything on counter hit anymore. Uh, <clears throat> so you're just better off using something like Matterhorn or down back 4 if you're trying to evade something. Uh, then we have a back one. It's a 16 frame mid and it's safe on block, but it's minus 9, so it kills your momentum. Uh, the hitbox is also really, really ter terrible. You can see it on the animation that it, it hits really high. Um, it, often, it often whiffs because of its uh, short range. It's super linear. Uh, I can hardly justify using this more this move over forward four, which is only one frame slower, but it has a much better hitbox, a little bit of tracking, and it's a counter hit launcher. Um, I guess the only redeeming quality of a back four, if you like to use it, is that on normal hits it gives a guaranteed do right three. Up 3 plus 4 is your next panic move. She jumps super high, it evades lows really quickly, and uh, it's safe on block. Uh, the problem is it's terrible range. If your opponent just holds back, it's gonna whiff, and they can also just slide under it really quickly and punish Lily in the back. Um, Normally you get a juggle from this, something like this. But if you hit uh, from further away, she just gets a knockdown like this. Or if the opponent is behind her a little bit, then it's just going to knock down a little bit like this and you get a, some free grounded hits here from back turn as well. Mm. Then we have up 4. This is a 15 frame hop kick, but this one launches only on counter hit as opposed to up 4 with 3. It can be harder to punish due to the pushback on block. There's a bigger pushback than after up 4 with 3. Uh, we used to be able to input up back 4, and Lily would jump backwards while doing this hop kick to create distance and it was really hard to punish it due to the distance, almost impossible I think. Now she cannot do that anymore, it's just up 4. So I would just use up 4 3 instead. A cheeky setup that I liked to do, it's really gimmicky, <laughs> it may work for you, is up 4 into Matterhorn because if they try to jab and issue here, it's going to whiff. Up forward 2. This is not a good move. It's supposed to be evasive, uh, but her sidestep is more evasive. It's unsafe on block 2, minus 10, so I cannot justify using this move at the wall over the tons of other safe lost spot moves that she has. Uh, one niche move. I mean, one niche use is when you are on player 2's side and you are forced into crouching with this. Lily can step to her left on crouch like this, which is normally not possible on player 2's side because uh, yeah, you can only sidestep to the background from crouch on player 2, but with this move she will, you know, kind of sidestep to the opposite direction. And then she has up for 3 plus 4. Uh, this is a safe on block, 
uh, jumping knee attack, same speed as hop kicks. Uh, it has an extension uh, 3, which is a duckable high. This does not jail. Uh, the good thing is that this is hit confirmable and it's plus 14 on hit with guard frames though. So uh, it's plus 14, but nothing is guaranteed here. Uh, they just have to block. Um, it's hit confirmable. And uh, then she has up for 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4. Um, you, you really cannot use this as a mix up for the 3 because they are not the same speed. It can be fuzzy guarded. Um, but it is uh, useful for hitting opponents in the back because it's completely guaranteed on mm, back turn opponents for uh, big damage. <laughs> And then forward forward 2, uh, this is not a useful move anymore, this used to be a launching power crush in Tekken 7, not anymore, Sag. Uh, however, you can use this to block punishing, uh, you can use this for block punishing moves with pushback for big damage like Asuka's back 3 for example, if you're quick enough with the forward forward input. And then we have forward forward 1 plus 2 this is uh, safe on block as well minus 9 uh, and it's homing um, I would not use this over forward 3 even though they're uh, of similar speed forward 3 has a much better frames and uh, also gives a guaranteed uh, Duke Light 3 on counter hit. Uh, but you can charge it up if you hold it. Uh, she can do two spins. And then it's plus 12 on block with guard frames again. So nothing is guaranteed. And it deals chip damage. And uh, after three spins, it's an unblockable. This is uh, used in setups like this after screw uh, but it only works if the opponent is tech rolling which most good opponents will but still uh, this is really this is really a predictable um, setup because Lily starts spinning before the opponent even hits the ground so uh, they can just see that you start spinning and and not tech roll and stay grounded uh, you can sort of use this uh, for mind games like play around with the amount of spins if you think they are going to try to interrupt before the third hit you can just let it go after two hits and uh, counter hit them for big damage it's not something I would use very often though because it's so slow uh, then we have her running three which also deals chip damage on block like so and apparently now it's plus on block as well this used to be minus on block. It used to be like the only rounding attack in the game that was minus on block, which is a nice change. It's not particularly useful. There are so many better running attacks in the game. And then we have sidestep 1 plus 2. As you can see, it's neutral on block. And this is why I love this move so much, because it's neutral on block. Most opponents will not realize that this is neutral on block. And it used to be minus 12. Uh, I mean, uh, minus 2 on block in Tekken 7. So it's even better now. Um, I like to do uh, some evasive attacks. If I think they're going to jab afterwards. Or uh, at the wall. I love using this move at the wall. Because then I... Uh, 
interrupt their retaliation with something quick like a 1 plus 2 or 2, 4 or uh, 1, 1, 3. Uh, another good thing about this move is that it's a counter hit launcher. Something like that. Um, it's just really slow and the range is not very good. If you can get over that, I think this is a really solid move. Uh, lastly, she has a punch parry in back 1 plus 3 or back 2 plus 4. It's not very good because the active window is very short. However, she gets really nice Oki afterwards. And it's quite useful against opponents who have many jab strings like Steve. And you can use it to punish strings that are otherwise safe on block. I recorded an example of her parry with versus uh, Shaoyu here. And she's in a really favorable Oki position here. Um, uh, up for 3 tends to relaunch some of their wake up options for a juggle. Well, for some reason it doesn't work now, but trust me, <laughs> it works. On some wake up options. Um, up for 3 uh, tends to hit side roll as well in some cases. So I mostly stick to up for 3 Oki. Okay. Uh, or 3 1 works well as well, and uh, just simply down to or for sickle for 3. Let's talk about her throws now. So, her 1 plus 3 generic throw is useful for repositioning because even if it's broken, uh, you get to get away from the wall and place your opponent closer to a wall. I'll be going through some Oki options after successful throws and all the options I'll be mentioning hit grounded re retaliation such as toe kicks, wake up kicks, etc. Um, grounded retaliation after throws is just too risky in general. So uh, up forward 3 hits wake up backwards. Um, and it also hits standing up, if you time it well. There we go. Uh, and it also hits uh, side roll right, although not on small characters. I tested it on Xiaoyu and it didn't hit side roll right. And uh, then we have standing 3, which also hits wake up backwards. Like so. And down 3 um, hits grounded and both side roll options. Uh, but then again, the opponent can stand up and block it. However, if they stand up to block, then they risk getting hit by up forward 3. And then... Quarter circle forward 3 hits grounded. And side roll left for bigger damage than down 3. And uh, I generally go just for down 3, because it covers many options. Mm, but if I know that my opponent will stay grounded and just uh, side roll and then keep staying grounded, then I'll just go for uh, do glide 3. And then we have her up for 3 plus, uh, I mean up for 1 plus 2 command throw, which is a 1 plus 2 break. Um, here up for 3 launches, launches uh, stand up. go and then we have standing three which 
uh, hits wake up backwards. The entire string does. And it also hits side roll right. And this also works on uh, small characters here, like Xiaoyu. And then uh, down three hits both wake up options again. Uh, just like after the one throw. And the uh, quarter circle for three hits grounded and sidle left. Just like with the uh, generic one throw. And uh, then we have her two throw. Many two throws in the game switch sides with the opponent. This does two, but not if it's broken. So it switches sides only on hit. So here, three one hits wake up backwards. It also hits stand up. Oops. And it also hits side roll right on small characters too. And again, uh, you can do down three. But down three here, uh, whiffs or, uh, versus uh, side roll left. But but then again, uh, after this throw, quarter circle for three hits both sides, both side rolls, if you time it well. <laughs> There we go. Inside roll right. Let's talk about her wall combos now, because I think many people are confused uh, about how her wall combos exactly work. So, with a one hit tornado, which is do three, we do while standing one, two, forward, three. With a two hit tornado, like back one four, or back turn one two, we do up forward four three. And with a three hit tornado, down two two four, we do either forward two three, or forward three plus four into Okizemi. Uh, also, do three and back turn one two, screw the opponent high enough. For Lily to manually enter back turn and do 4 3 3 plus 4 as an ender. Um, this used to be her best wall ender in Tekken 7. It's not that damaging anymore, but it's still useful if you want to uh, go for a back turn Okizemi. And in this situation, back turn down 4 is better than back turn down 2. Because after the wall ender, uh, the opponent doesn't have enough time to hold back and block the down 4. Uh, they have to stand up by pressing up and then block the low. And then they are vulnerable f uh, by for getting hit by mids. So this would look something like this. Oops. I'm going to talk about that a little later. So that's like a, an additional 7 points of damage, unscaled. Uh, they can however spring kick and uh, toe kick over it. Uh, 
and here you have to hold them back and punish them so this is a good uh, situation for Lily as well let's talk about her wall carry options now now one thing to note here is that in Tekken 8 you have enough time to dash up after tornadoes and then do your wall carry this gives you better wall carry uh, so my first favorite option is forward 2-3 It carries really far and it launches the opponent quite high into the air so it's easy to connect your combo ender on the wall then you can also do back one four um, this uh, travels a, a similar distance to forward two three but it doesn't launch the opponent as high up in the air which sometimes makes your ball ender harder to hit um, then you can also do 3 plus 4. You can also do back turn 3 4. And something like down four three plus four into back turn one two or while standing two into back turn one two the back turn one two also launches the opponent quite up, high up in the air so it makes it easier for you to land your wall ender you can also just manually enter back turn and do back turn one two Um, if you are close to the wall, you can just uh, keep it simple with something like jabs. And she has many options even if you want to go for the back turn combo ender. Like while standing two back. Down for two back, which covers a little less distance than while standing two. While standing two is the best one for wall carry if you want to go for the back turn ender. Back to one back also works, and you can also do down for three plus four into back turn four three three plus four. However, then you might as well just use down for two instead because it launches the opponent a little higher up in the air mid combo than down for three plus four, which sometimes makes it harder for you to land the wall ender. Now let's talk about forward forward one plus two in combos because I see people not understanding how exactly this works in combos. Is it even worth it? Etc. So I think in most cases this is not worth the extra damage because it's really hard to land. The timing is quite strict. Um, I find this useful if you want to squeeze out just a little bit more damage in your combos and you've practiced this enough that you are not going to drop it in combos uh, because you can uh, connect uh, heat burst afterwards and rage arts as well. Um, I like doing this combo. Into heat smash, etc. Um, but hitting the forward for one plus two um, uh, is specific. So you need to do the two spins. not just one spin or three spins, it has to be two spins and it only works after specific screw attacks, I mean tornado attacks in juggles so it works the best after back turn 1-2 
I find the timing to be not as strict. It also works after back one four, but I find this really hard to land. The timing is much more strict than after back turn one two, in my opinion. Well, I managed to hit it there. And it also works after do 3, but only if do 3 launches the opponent high enough mid combo. And there aren't many combos like that. So the vo first route is launch forward 2 3, do 3 into the 2 spins. There we go. Or uh, after Lost Ending 2 and uh, Matterhorn. Here it's actually pretty easy to land it, and then you can do something like instant Lost Ending 2, back turn 3 4, heat smash, and so on. And uh, you can also uh, finish the combo with just do 3 on its own for a little bit more damage than her standard juggle enders. Like so. Um, you may have seen combo videos where they did the two spins into forward for 3. I would not suggest you to try this because the timing is just too strict to be uh, practical in uh, matches. However, the forward for 3 is much easier to land on bears. The timing is not as strict on bears because of their large hitbox. And you can also do fancy stuff like Okay, I'm not going to attempt it now, but basically you can do this into instant while standing two back into a back turn wall under. She also has two unblockable setups that I know of. So the first one is after a tornado, a fully charged forward forward one plus two hits the tech roll to both sides. Oh, yeah, the timing is quite finicky. Doesn't seem to work after every screw. Your best bet is using it after a, a do 3 tornado. Also, after extending your combo in heat, you can do back one four to catch a tech roll right it works off of every heat combo extender not just after three four and now let me explain my favorite okizami setup with lily and that's forward three plus four spike into do three you will see me doing this very often in the open and at the walls as well. So basically, you can spike your opponent with 4, 3 plus 4 in a combo. And then do 3 will catch every wake up option, again, except uh, standing up and toe kicks. However, a small but important detail here is that you have to dash up before the forward 3 plus 4. Otherwise, uh, the do 3 will not work, it will whiff. So, uh, if the opponent stands up, they block it, you're still safe, because it's minus 9. And Lily can beat this option as well, with forward 4. 
So it's a pretty nasty Okizami setup. And against Toe Kicks, you can do something like down for 3 plus 4 to launch them. Or you can also do. Dash up, up 3 plus 4. Or just low parry, block it, sidestep it. Whatever. Also, there are two common combo routes that work off of uh, up 4 3. Well, one of the routes works off of, uh, off of up 4 3. And the other one works off of heat launchers, uh, which also guarantee a uh, forward 3 plus 4 into do 3. And these combo routes uh, put the opponent off axis, which makes the do 3 completely guaranteed for big damage. So, up 4 3 on its own already puts the, op the opponent off axis a little. And here you can do back to one, back to one forward, dash, sidewalk right into forward three plus four into do three. And there's the guaranteed do three. That was like half a life bar just from a hop kick. And off of heat launchers. Oops. There we go. That was also half a life bar. So that was uh, two times back to... No, three times back to one back. And then forward three. Into a small dash. Sidewalk right. Forward two three and do three. Okay, let's talk about stage gimmicks now. Uh, so we will start with the wall bounds. I like to use back to one, one plus two uh, for a wall bound. For example, here. Because it does uh, a large chunk of damage. And if you want a strong one hit option, then you can just do forward forward 3 plus 4. And sometimes I use just 3 1 on its own uh, when the wall spot is quite low and I'm afraid of not having a, enough time to dash up uh, and do a back to 1, 1 plus 2, nor forward forward 3 plus 4. And for a long time, I wasn't able to figure out what to do after a wall bound when I already used my screw. However, I found Do Light 3. So let's see this in action. Do you see the frame advantage here? Let me show you again. Plus 30, and in brackets, plus 12. Compared to other options, such as this, which are actually minus for Lily. So, uh, because of the frame advantage after Quarter Circle 4 3, you can dash up to the opponent and. Uh, continue your offense with a with a frame advantage of your own and quarter circle forward 3 still hits for a really nice chunk of damage and uh, depending on the amount of hits my combo has I can also do forward forward 3 do glide 3 instead of just uh, do glide 3 on its own For example, here. 
because uh, the more hits you have in your combo, the further away uh, the opponent is pushed. So if your opponent, uh, I mean, if your combo has many hits, for example here, then your opponent is pushed too far away for forward four three two three. On wall blast stages, Lily's Dactron Heat Smash is a launcher. Uh, as for combos, we have a few options. Uh, so your first option would be to wall blast with back to one one plus two. But if you want to screw on the wall and then break it with back to one plus two, you need to use a one hit screw. So a combo would be something like this. And then three plus four wall carry into forward two three. Uh, forward two three is not a standard combo ender for Lily, uh, but it's needed for this route. Her usual wall enders will not work due to the amount of hits in uh, back to one one plus two. And the second option that I like is using three one to wall blast, and then do down down forward neutral while standing two back into back turn 4, 3, 3 plus 4. Uh, that's... There we go. And then you get your back turn now, okay. For uh, Floor Blasts, a uh, few moves become launchers on uh, this stage. Uh, so we're 1 plus 3 throw. Something like this for a combo. Uh, her Heat Smash from Neutral is also a launcher here. Then forward uh, 3 plus 4. Which is really good because this becomes a, <laughs> a safe um, mid launcher on this stage. And the same goes for while standing 4, down forward 4, but only at the wall. And uh, while standing 3, 4. This string is useless on its own because regardless of whether you finish the stream or not last standing three is still punch punishable uh, however if you use while standing three as a punisher and you finish the string on this stage it does a big chunk of damage it's 53 damage just from two hits For uh, combos, um, there's nothing special really. I like to floor blast with down forward uh, 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, and then finish the wall combo with up forward 4, 3. Or uh, floor blast with core circle forward 1, 2, and then finish my combo. For ball break and hard wall break uh, stages, I like to use again back two one one plus two, three one, or forward four two plus four mid combo to break the wall. Uh, again, one thing to note here is that her back turn heat smash counts as a hard wall break. Mm. Normally, for hard for, uh, I mean, wall breaks, you need two hits. First wall hit to crack the wall, and the second one to break it. But the back turn hit smash immediately counts as a hard uh, wall break. On floor break stages, the same moves that wall blast will floor, bla floor break as well. Um, so that's the 
One plus three, throw. And while standing, three, four. Four, three plus four. And then the wall. While standing, four, down, four, four, four. Um. I forgot to mention that the heat uh, smash from neutral also uh, counts as a floor blast and uh, or break. As for hard floor break, which is the first floor on the stage, you normally need two uh, floor break hits to break it. So uh, the first one will crack it. And the floor will turn pink, like so, and the second one will break it. However, her neutral hit smash immediately counts as a hard uh, floor break. And there's currently a glitch for Lily on the stage that gives her an advantage. So, uh, this string is one of her standard combo enders. Although the combo counter doesn't count it as a true combo, it really works as a true combo because the opponent cannot, cannot escape in between. Uh, but because the combo counter doesn't count it as one connected combo, you get basically two screws in one combo on this stage. And also back turn 4, 3, 3 plus 4 also counts as an instant uh, part floor break just like the heat smash. So let me show you in a combo. Something like this into manual back turn into back turn 4, 3, 3 plus 4. Instant hard floor break. And here, I use my first screw, and now, I get a second one. Which is not normal. But it works for Lily, and it still isn't patched. On balcony break stages, again, I, uh, I like to use back to 1, 1 plus 2, 3, 1, or forward 4, 3 plus 4 to break the wall, depending on the amount of hits that I want in my combo. And uh, if you already used your screw in your combo, again, I like to finish with uh, a variation of 4 circle 4 3, so something like this. Back to 1, forward, quarter circle 4 3, or forward 4 3, forward uh, do glide three, or just do glide three on its own, depending the amount of depending on the amount of hits my combo has. And now we reached the end of this guide. If you fell asleep already from my monotonous voice, good night. And if you are still awake, I hope you learned something new, and take care.